Donald Trump's campaign chief is telling Republican donors to ignore the former president's divisive rhetoric and focus on his primary lead instead. CNBC reports that message was delivered in Palm Beach, Florida on Tuesday at a private gathering of the wealthiest GOP donors in the country. Susie Wiles, a top advisor to the Trump campaign, told the deep-pocketed donors the former president is going to say things that people don't like but argued Trump is on the path to securing the GOP nomination and is the party's best bet to defeat Biden. That's according to people familiar with her remarks. So here is some of Trump's rhetoric the campaign might want donors to ignore. At a rally on Saturday, the former president questioned American support for Ukraine in its fight against the Russian invasion and then pivoted to new attacks on NATO. And you know, Ukraine's an interesting case. People always want to know my feeling. Number one, we're in for 200 billion plus, and the European nations are in for 20 billion. And it's more important for them. And don't you think they should equalize? Nobody asks them. It's like I did with NATO. I said, we're spending, we're, we're paying for NATO, and we don't get so much out of it. And you know, I hate to tell you this about NATO. If we ever needed the help, let's say we were attacked, I don't believe they'd be there. Joining us now, former National Security Advisor and U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, John Bolton. He is the author of the book entitled The Room Where It Happened, which is out in paperback this week with a new forward. And that new forward serves as a warning about just how bad uh, you, ha you believe a second Trump term would be. And in it, you write uh, in part this. At this writing, Trump is well positioned for re-election for uh, more than a year. This prospect has prompted pessimism and even despair among Reaganite conservatives. Political forensics experts may well conclude that their inactivity, standing on the sidelines, returned Trump to power. The facts, however, are clear that he is unfit to be president. If his first four years were bad, a second four will be worse, dismaying many ardent supporters. I hope what follows is a sufficient warning to America's voters to help avoid our worst fears from coming true. So the impact of a second term would be dangerous to our national security, uh, to say the least. Uh, are you saying that at some point people need to believe his rhetoric? Yeah, I, I think Trump actually says what uh, what comes to mind is a very astute person once said to me, he does not have a filter between his brain and his mouth. Uh, and so when he, for example, threatens to get out of NATO, as he did during his first term and has done since then, I think people better believe it. And I think that would be a catastrophic mistake for American national security and the security of the West as a whole. In the clip you just ran, he said several things that are simply incorrect. And it reveals uh, an important trait about Trump on national security issues and many others. He's fundamentally ignorant. Mm -hmm. And he really doesn't care about the facts. He thinks international relations are about personal relations, which is a, a line and approach that I can tell you Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping are eagerly looking forward to. So Republicans still have another option. I mean, it's unlikely, I guess, if you look at the numbers and the way the states are lined up. But is Nikki Haley a viable alternative? Would you advise Republicans to vote for her? Well, I would advise her. I hope I hope she would stay in until the convention and carry the banner for 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 anybody who doesn't want Trump. Uh, a meteor might yet strike the earth. That's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, it's possible there'll be an event in one of these criminal prosecutions that would really wake a lot of people up. Uh, uh, until the convention in August, I just don't think that uh, that that we should surrender in effect to Trump. Uh, and I think this has a significant impact on the Senate and House elections this year as well. Uh, as for Nikki, I understand yesterday she said that whether Texas wanted to secede from the union was up to Texas. You know, that's not true. So, But she can carry the banner for, as I say, for, for those who are deeply concerned about uh, the risk of the Republican Party nominating Donald Trump.
Ambassador Bolton, good morning. Um, I want to ask you about Ukraine specifically and if Donald Trump is reelected, what that would mean. We mm -hmm. know that Vladimir Putin is hoping to wait this out to see if Donald Trump, his old friend who has shown great affection publicly and privately, if he is in power. Mitch McConnell even said yesterday we've got to move on from attaching Ukraine and Israel aid to this immigration legislation because Ukraine desperately needs our support. Um, what is your sense of the way things could go in the short term if we don't fund Ukraine in the long term if Donald Trump is elected? Well, in the short term, I've been worried for some time that Vladimir Putin uh, would get up one day and say, you know, this war has gone on long enough. Let's have a ceasefire in place and start negotiating, which, of course, is what the Biden administration would love to do. That's that's their preferred outcome. But it would give Russia a new de facto boundary that would rapidly become permanent in Ukraine. I think Europe would fade away. I, th I think this is a very dangerous time for Ukraine. If Trump gets in, what he has said on the campaign trail is he's get Zelensky and Putin in a room together and resolve the matter in 24 hours. Now, that's another silly statement from Trump. Uh, that won't happen. And when it fails, Trump will have to find somebody to blame. Obviously, it won't be his fault. Uh, mm -hmm. So it'll be one of the other two. And I think the odds are almost 100 to, to one that it would be Zelensky. P Putin would welcome that. This, this A Trump election is not just uh, bad news for Ukraine. It's bad news all around the world because that approach, uh, his withdrawal from NATO, if he does it, and I think he will, will encourage the leaders in Beijing and elsewhere to take advantage of it. Ambassador Bolton, President Biden has said that he has made a decision as to what the appropriate response will be in the wake of the drone attack in Jordan that killed three U.S. service members and that we should expect it to happen in the coming days and officials said yesterday could last weeks. You're someone who, of course, served as national security advisor at times of tension with Iran. What would be your thought as to an appropriate response and would it include striking within the borders of Iran itself? Well, I think first you have to get the strategic situation right. And I think uh, the Biden White House has gotten it wrong ever since October the 7th. This, this is a coordinated action by Iran's surrogates. Uh, and it's not just the 160 plus attacks that the Shia militia in Iraq and Syria have made uh, since then. And, and tragically on Sunday, it's the Houthis stopping commercial traffic in the Red Sea, Hamas obviously attacking Israel and Hezbollah attacking uh, Israel from the north. Uh, Iran has paid no price, no price for any of this activity. And I think to get their attention and to make it clear, we consider their behavior across the region utterly unacceptable, that there have to be attacks uh, across what Iran considers a red line, and that's in their territory. Now, being a very moderate guy myself, these initial attacks in Iran do not need to be regime threatening. Uh, we can, for example, take out substantial numbers of uh, air defense locations that Iran has set up. Uh, we can go after bases in western Iran that our military has wanted to attack up to, for up to two decades, bases where the militias were trained and equipped, sent across back into Iraq to kill American service members. We can sink Iranian ships in the Red Sea that are aiding the Houthis, violate freedom of seas for the whole world. Now, that's, that's what my first step would be. Uh, if, if Iran uh, understands what we're up to at that point, uh, then we might see hostilities diminish across the region. If they didn't, then we could consider other steps and should. Do I think the Biden administration will do that? No. We hear they're tracing down the location of this bit of militia or that bit of militia that may have fired one drone. Look, uh, we're not prosecuting a case in court. Th this is a war that Iran has launched and they've killed Americans. Uh, they've crossed one of our red lines. It's time we crossed one of theirs. The Room Where It Happened is out now in paperback with a new forward, former National Security Advisor and U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, John Bolton. Thank you very much for coming on this morning. Thanks right. for having me. Coming